man im Fließ und ins Wasser, durch eine bestimmte Bewegung reguliere er Frische, dann erreiche ich den manuellen Zustand, die, die höchste Dichte, die größte äh, Schleppkraft, das Wasser fängt zum Ziehen an und damit habe ich das The secret of the egg form. When a drill rotates at about 28,000 revolutions per minute, the drill bit can be made to bend without breaking by displacing the material being drilled. When the high-speed drill bit is bent, heat is generated at the point of flexure, the position of the smallest radius at X, see figure 8A. When the drill bit is not under load, the faster the rate of rotation, the thinner the shaft can be. The thinner the shaft, the less driving force required. That is, with the thinnest shaft, only minimal boring pressure is possible. The slightest overloading causes the drill bit to break. Through this observation, I have become aware of a hitherto unknown source of energy which could fundamentally change current technology. Instead of transferring power directly, it is possible to exploit reactive forces obtained by indirect means. If air or water is centrifuged in a naturalesquely constructed egg form, the only a portion of the material conglomerates or reacts to the horizontal centrifugence. This is because these organisms, air and water, have been endowed with catalytically active character through the addition of bipolar minerals and catalytically active character through the incorporation and arrangement of bipolar wall surfaces. That is to say, only the carbons and hydrogen are conducted to the position of greatest radius. There, with rising pressure due to increasing rate of rotation, they are forced against the rotating inner wall of the wobbling egg form, see figure 8b. The higher waste matter, so-called oxygen, separates out and accumulates about the longitudinal axis of the egg form, the latter rotating about its own axis. The higher the RPM, the smaller the cross-sectional area of the oxygen core ranged around the longitudinal axis, shown at star in figure 8c. Now an intermediate phenomenon. Through the increased RPM-induced rise in pressure, a potential or charge develops at the position of greatest horizontal radius. After a certain critical minimum pressure has been exceeded, this gives way to a depotentiation or discharge, which results in the relapse of the water previously raised through centrifugence. See figure 8D. As a counter effect, the release of an ampereless energy form can be observed, which flows away in a wobby linear manner. See figure 8D. After a short period, the de energized and thus previously relapsed water rises once again to the point of maximum radius, as shown in figure 8E. Immediately after the water has subsided, the rate of rotation rises. When the relapsed water again rises at the location of maximum horizontal radius, then an exponentially increased pressure is exerted on the wall surface. As a result, the partially de-energized water once again sinks. At this instant, the rate of rotation again increases, whereby the lateral pressure again rises exponentially and so on. The higher waste matter, the oxygen, executes a rhythmically ordered interplay, and every time the water sinks, the oxygen converges further towards the longitudinal axis, reducing the cross-section of the oxygen core in the process, see figure 8F. In other words, every de-energizing of the carbons and hydrogen on the horizontal axis, plane, results in the charging, potentiation, of the longitudinally centered oxygen core. That is to say, with every lateral depotentiation, the oxygen core is extended longitudinally, vertically, its tip developing towards the top of the longitudinal axis. The higher the RPM rises in consequence of the rhythmical depotentiation of the carbones and hydrogen, at which time the ammeter indicating the amount of current falls, the more elongated the self-centering oxygen core becomes due to the heightened RPM. This centrally disposed, increasingly slimmer and longer egg form is the fifth egg form, C figure 8C and 8G, which is formed within a second, third, and fourth egg, each of which encloses and surrounds a more highly cultured substance. Through processes of atomic fission, therefore, five zones are created, the point of the innermost of which also points towards the narrow end of the outermost egg form. 
when the maximal velocity of the rotating outer egg form is exceeded, ions stream out of the tip of the innermost egg. These are emitted in pulsations and are shot into space at extremely high velocities. If these ions stream, which with concentric compactness rotate about their own axis, encounter a twisted conductor, see figure 8H, then this pure kinetic energy is transformed into heat and consumed in the process. This heat form, however, has a contracting force and sinks in contrast to the familiar diffusing heat form which rises. The first heat form, however, is important for the formation and ordering of growth, although this is only incidental. If these ion discharges are conducted to the exterior via the points of suitable cones, we are presented with a kind of ion cannon, see figure 8i. With this, the radius of action and the velocity of the emitted ions can be regulated at will by increasing the rotational velocity of the egg as it rotates about its own axis. When an emitted ion encounters a substance floating in space at high altitudes, the substance will be heated up, de-energized or discharged in the process, and disintegrated. With every ion emission, therefore, the particles, microspaces floating in space, will be reduced in size. These substances will be bombarded until even the original microspace becomes spaceless or reverts to a pure energy form. Since this energy form carries an opposite charge relative to the emitted ion, any following ion carrying a positive charge will be attracted to the negatively charged products of disintegration due to its opposite polarity. In this way, the original force of emission will be intensified through elementary forces of attraction. Further conclusions will not be addressed here, since these rightly belong to the processes of formation itself. These provide the impetus and basis for growth in the form of counter-ions, which come into being through the reversion of the highest energy products. Growth must therefore be considered from a substantially different point of view than it is today. Vertical winds, cyclones, typhoons, hurricanes, water spouts, and so on, could be viewed as natural examples of this, which is why the repulsator is the ideal pump. The repulsator, for example, can suck in seawater, atomize and draw it upwards. The water's content of oxygen also does not react to centrifugence, but operating in the opposite sense, shapes the movement on the longitudinal axis. Its end product is actually the positive ion. For this reason, the remaining water centrifuged out through the wavy form is sweet, fresh. See patent example. That the formation of the Gulf Stream and the movement of sea and air currents can also be explained in this way is self-evident. In this way too, and for the first time, the Ur formation of the Earth, the Ur creation of the bioanode, if the Moon, and naturally the Ur formation of the biocathode of the Sun becomes understandable. The secret lies hidden in the own axis, which comes into being through the atomic fission and centering of the oxygen and the dynamic motion of a naturalesquely constructed egg form.